Welcome back to the 10 Second Film School, everyone. This is Prof Linus. Thanks for tuning in. For Noir Vember, I wish to present this often forgotten film noir gem on dangerous ground. One of my favorite film noirs, not just because it was almost never made, but because it hits hard with its handheld cinematography. And its gritty screenplay was written by none other than legend A.I. Bezerdas before he worked on Kiss Me Deadly. He was not the producer's first choice of writer, but I would say that this screenplay and Kiss Me Deadly are his two best. The film clearly shows a split in directorial style, the film having been partially directed by Ida Lupino, the film's female star, after Nicholas Ray fell ill during production. The city scenes show cinematographer George Descant's impeccable handling of shadows. And the country scenes seem like something that could be found in a Douglas Cirque melodrama. Descant uses a variety of filming techniques, but most notably he uses an Italian neorealist handheld technique found rarely in American films in the early 50s. Take note of how the car crash is filmed. The film is a meditation on masculine identity and police brutality in the late 1940s. It is a rare noir that takes place partially in the city and partially in the hostile wintry countryside, filmed on location in Colorado. Robert Ryan is Jim Wilson, a cop on the verge of a mental breakdown. Ryan was about 39 when he started in this, right around the time he had his first son. The opening sequence where the three detective colleagues leave their homes in the morning to go to work is the most biting statement about masculinity you're ever going to see in 50s noir. Take a look at this sequence when the three men prepare for their day at the office. In the very first scene, we see a detective, Pete Santos, played by Anthony Ross, who is being dressed by his wife. Talk about the emasculated male. They embrace. She tells him she doesn't like being alone. They kiss, and she showers him with affection, and Pete doesn't seem to want it. Long story short, he has a family, but it is not a strong one. Pete then drives over to his partner's house, who lives with his mother. The mother helps the partner get dressed as well. Essentially, Pete rescues him from that home. The third scene is the most interesting one. We see Jim as a fractured man, living in an incomplete home. He busses the dishes himself and gets dressed by himself. His entrance to the movie is seen as a juxtaposition against the first two men. It is also worth noting that the character of Wilson is unusually single. They almost should have made him a character who possesses a grotesque or noticeable physical flaw, rather than in the body of someone traditionally handsome and imposing like Robert Ryan. Not only because this would have made more narrative sense that a blind woman falls in love with him. The character of Myrna, an echo of the traditional femme fatale played by Cleo Moore, even comments on Wilson's handsome appearance and manhandles him when she wants a drag from his cigarette. Ida Lupino was 30 years old when On Dangerous Ground was being filmed. And she has the most interesting entrance of the young actress that we have seen yet in her career. In fact, apropos to the character, since she is playing a blind woman, we hear her voice before we see her face. The strongest feature of this movie is the music. The score is by Bernard Herrmann, who is on record having said that this film was one of his more rewarding projects. And he said this after having worked on all of the Hitchcock films like Psycho and Vertigo that he became famous for. Listen carefully and you may hear segments that sound a bit like the score to North by Northwest. Regarding the film score's unique instrumentation, you hear a rarely heard instrument, the viola di amore, which was used for the musical motif accompanying the character of Mary Malden. The viola di amore was played by legendary Hollywood violist Virginia Majowski. Her playing was so profound and majestic that Herman insisted with RKO that she share on-screen credit with him. On Dangerous Ground is such a satisfying noir about a troubled detective who only finds peace after being sent away from his toxic urban environment. The film is superbly photographed in deep focus wide shots, and its message about police brutality makes it still relevant today. Other interesting facts to note, the guy who plays Danny is actually Nicholas Ray's nephew. And I was surprised to discover that there were two endings made for this film. And the only ending available to us today is the revised one, mandated by the studio RKO. The original ending was allegedly more somber and less resolute than what we can view today. I personally think that this film would have been stronger had the character of Jim Wilson kept driving at the end, or if we saw him at the police station the following day, a changed man. And I rarely ever say this, but I guess this is what makes this movie a good candidate for a possible remake. Hi everyone, if you liked what you saw, please follow me at the social media accounts you see on the screen. If you wish to show more support, I will also include a link to my Patreon page and a link to purchase my new classroom textbook. Thank you so much again for visiting and don't forget to subscribe.